Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Silver and Show. Today we are joined by a dynamic guest who has been representing the UK Caribbean diaspora professionals and is a former chief executive of RAFA. That's all coming up on The Silver and Show. Welcome our guest today. I'd like to touch on an issue of leadership. There is a saying that one has to lead from the front. Is that correct? Could it be said that one may not be the leader of the pack, but one can be the leader and master of your game within the pack? So either way, whether you're positioned at the head of the pack or within the pack, you're still a leader. Is that a fair comment? Let's break it down. Do you have responsibilities within your job? Do you have responsibilities within your skill set? If the answers are yes, then you are a leader as you have to lead on those responsibilities. Anyway, join in the discussion online by commenting on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All the information is on the screen now for you. Good. Joining us today, we have Rudy Page. Rudy Page, who is a chief executive of Making Connections Work, who has an extensive track record representing the UK Caribbean diaspora professionals and is former chief executive of RAFA International Development Agency. RAFA was a source for substantial medical equipment, including a mobile blood collection unit to National Blood Transfusion Service, Kingston, Jamaica. Rudy, hi and welcome. Good to be here. Fantastic. Good, good, good. to see you again, Silver. Rudy, now tell me, how do you look 25? Clean living. Clean living? Clean living. That's, that's my answer. But do you clean. know in Jamaica, they say clean living is when you... Um, get the stuff from the earth, you know? <laughs> yeah, I like natural food. <laughs> natural food. Okay, yeah, I was talking okay. a different thing, you know? I know. <laughs> but anyhow, let's pass on okay, one. Yeah. Listen, you have, been yeah. the, you have a long, extensive work in the community, mm. and as I said, you still look 25. Okay. What is your driving force? Uh, the driving force, mm. I guess, really goes back to working at Dyke and Dryden, actually. Yeah, Because yeah. that's actually where I began mm. my career and community involvement. And in those days, uh, business and the community were integral part of how you operated. Yes. So I really learned that from Len Dyke, Dudley Dryden and Tony Wade. It's interesting you mentioned Tony Wade because mm -hmm. we had Tony Wade sometime. I think he's the last of the three. Mm -hmm. I call him, Sorry. I'll say the three dragons, yeah. if yeah. anything, or there are the the key yeah. inspiring forces. Can you yeah. explain a bit more about Dyke yeah. and Dryden? Yeah, I, I call them our Caribbean titans, our yes. late 20th century Caribbean titans, yes. the three of them, because it, it, it was about business, mm. but it was also it was about community, it was about developing young people. It was also about financing um, businesses as well, because in fact, at one point, they were the largest provider of trade credits. Yes to the businesses in our yeah. community. And uh, that gave us a lot of jobs as well, lots yeah. of entrepreneurial opportunities. So it's quite an extensive yeah. uh, system in itself within yeah. the whole uh, industry. Right. And people yeah. like myself were able to come through. Okay, that's good because, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, you remember we had Tony Wade on the show. You see a little clip now. But also in the clip, you'll see a, a, a very young, uh, a skinny man who is there <laughs> giving a, a, a talk. Um, as, he, as you were, I'm talking about you, Rudy. Thank you. You were the sales, what, what were you? Well, I was the sales and marketing manager yeah. and I was responsible for launching Afro Hair and Beauty. Yes. In fact, I coined those three words, Afro Hair and Beauty. That was in 1983. Now, 1983, that's the age. Yeah. That's, that's what I wanted to. So we're talking about how many years now? 33 years 33 ago. 33 years ago. It was the original. Um, show, yeah. If we take a, a, a full shot uh, of Rudy Page, and you see 33 years ago, and he's still looking 25. I don't understand how that works, really. <laughs> no, that, that's interesting, because yeah. the Dyke and Dryden show was, was very interesting. And one of the questions that I did ask Mr. Wade mm -hmm. was, is the legacy still alive yeah. of the hair industry? Yeah. What's your, yeah. just, uh, I'm just deviating a bit, but what's Yeah, your? that's an interesting, uh, topic all the time yeah. in our community mm. and there's a the, there's a reality of doing business yes and um at the end of the day a market is very competitive yes and uh if you can survive you can survive but there's there's a lot of um issues relating to customers yes customers want the best price so sometimes people will go up the road even if it's yes. 10 pence cheaper 
And um, I guess the legacy really is, is really the talent that came through. Mm. So it's not so much the hair industry, yeah. but it, it provided opportunity and training for hundreds, literally hundreds of people so in a, from in, the community. Right. So in a sense, when we say community, then mm. can we are we widening that mm. word community? In a sense, so that's a good question, because if you look at the Caribbean community, yes. and that the Caribbean community is where we came from, yes. right? But if you think of the wider community, say the wider British community, yes. Dyke and Dryden also was important, because in business, you know, we, we talk a lot these days about supply chains, yes. right? So in its day, Dyke and Dryden provided jobs for people in Bradford, because they had their own mm. range of hair products called Natural Beauty and Super mm. Curl. But those products were actually manufactured in, in, in Bradford. And so Dyke and Dryden was a big exporter of those products as well. So it was a contribution to British export. And as I already yeah. said, Dyke and Dryden provided opportunities for our community, but there was a wider impact on yeah. the British industry. It's very interesting, yeah. this discussion, because one of the, the four ambit of the show, or the four yeah. um, st stands, is inspiring, motivational, yeah. educational, entertaining. And yeah. right now, there's an educational process which I'm seeing happening now, yeah. whereby uh, many times the, the historical yeah. factor of the black community sometimes yeah. is not, um, what should I say, captured, yeah. in a sense. And this leads me now to the, when you're responsible for the international recognized NLTEC yeah. Business Link Synergy yeah. Project, mm -hmm. which developed the theme international trade as a tool for local economic development. Can yeah. you explain to me and the viewers more about this yeah. and the link also from Dyke and Dryden to that? Right, and that's a good question because, and you're right, within mm. our community, unless you're a celebrity, mm. you don't necessarily get recognized. But yes. a few years ago uh, in the Tottenham area, in sort of that part of London, yes. I was responsible as a management consultant for working with the um, North London Training Enterprise yes. Council mm -hmm. and Business Link. And that basically is a system that links local people, local jobs, in order to you know, make their way in the world. Yeah. And, and, it's always un and it's underpinned by training. Mm -hmm. And in those days, I don't know if you remember Bernie Grant. Yes, I remember Bernie uh, He was responsible for what was called at the, at the time called Global Trade Centre. Yes. And the whole drive behind that, and it's still an important drive for the UK, is that we must do international trade. So mm -hmm. every country has to make things and sell them. Yes. And so our, our, the idea behind that was as simple as that. If we support local businesses mm -hmm. to trade internationally, that's a benefit to the business, to the country, but also it's a benefit to the country you're doing business as well. So it's about trading, it's not just selling to. Yes. So it's buying and selling. So this was what, um, linked within the Caribbean? Black Caribbean community? and wider community. Yes. It, it happened to be an idea from within the Caribbean community, yes. but it, was, it benefited the Caribbean community, but it also benefited the wider community, right. which is important in, mm. in terms of economic development, because in a local yeah. community you've got people from all backgrounds. What were, were these objectives um, achieved? What do you say these objectives were yeah, achieved? Yeah, I mean, one of, one of the um, most biggest outcomes from mm. that, we arranged a trade mission to South Africa. Yeah. That was uh, Patrick Berry and myself, supported by Baroness Howells. And at the time, um, we were described, it was actually the first ever trade mission mm. um, led by Caribbean business people to South Africa, actually, but representing the UK. So mm. we didn't go there representing ourselves. Yes. We went there as representing UK business. The, the bit about ethnic minorities, mm. second and third generation in yeah. London, UK, yeah. um, f coming from that era to now, mm -hmm. and of course, I believe I know the answer, yeah. is, is there still a need for organizations dedicated solely to these groups? Right, what I'd say, what I would say, the answer is yes. Because mm. if, if we just take the Caribbean community here, yes. or the diaspora, yes. I mean, all, all countries have their diasporas anyway. And, and I think it's important just in terms of culture, cultural communication, 
self-esteem because it's important for, yes. and family ties there's a reality uh, we still have our family ties in the Caribbean yes. re regardless and I think it's important that we make a contribution in the Caribbean both in the interest of the UK yes. and the Caribbean it itself well listen we're going to take a break and I'm going to touch on a few things more about what you're about um, and also about CARICOM as well, because um, you, you, you're talking a lot on a, on a global level at the same time. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break, but coming up, we'll talk further at Rudy. See you soon. Welcome back to the show. And of course, we have Rudy Page, very dynamic individual. Rudy, thank you again. Good, good, good. Okay. okay. Let's touch on the opening remarks. Um, you, yeah. you have heard what I said yeah. about... Um, there's a saying that leading from the front, yeah. that's the only way to lead. Yeah. Is that correct? Could it be said that one may not be the lead of the pack, yeah. but one can be the lead and master of your game within the pack? What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts, I don't fully agree with that because I'm one of those people who be, believe in what we call transformational leadership. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as you alluded to in the beginning, that that approach can be at all levels. Yes. So in fact, we do want leaders at all levels, mm -hmm. all sectors, whether it's community, business, in the church. So you, you don't know. agree with, you only can lead from the front? No, I certainly okay. don't. I don't that. really believe in the cheerleader. And there's an old saying mm. that uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're trying to lead on your own, yes. and you look round and there's nobody behind you, maybe you should be following. <laughs> That's so, a good one. So I'm very yeah. much, a, if you're going to lead, it's about uh, listening, learning, mm -hmm. and leading. Mm -hmm. So I believe in the concept of listen, mm -hmm. learn, and lead. And um, there's a, a lot of conventional ways of leading. Mm -hmm. But in this day and age with technology, all the different ideas that we have, most of our businesses now are knowledge-based. So. Mm -hmm. With what we call knowledge-based discipline yeah. in terms of business. So it's very, very much about collaboration. So yes. the use of intellectual capital, yes. traditional knowledge, all those kind of disciplines, you, you need to collaborate. You need to work as a team. So I'm very much about how do we produce teams that are yes. cohesive, productive and effective, whether we're here in the UK or in the Caribbean. And or what do you think about within the, the Caribbean community yeah. in that sphere of leadership? Many right. people want to be the one who's at the top of the game, mm -hmm. um, but mm. not wanting to be a part of the game, but want to be at the top of the game. Do you see that as an issue? Yeah. <clears throat> one of the challenges that we probably have in our community mm. is that we do have some very good team players. Yes. And we <clears throat> do have some people who are, who are doing well as teams. But the, um, we, we don't really have the kind of communication that informs the community that we do work as teams, we yes. do collaborate, we do give, we do support, we, you know, we, we, we do think in a holistic yeah. sense. What we tend to only see are those who the cheerleader the type, yeah. and then obviously the, the disputes that yeah. then... Uh, that, that, that. That, that, that is correct, and, yeah. um, and I'm sure even, I can say this and I can predict this, that. Um, once the show goes out, people are going to be saying, wow, I didn't know this. And, and that's one of the reasons why yeah. I tend to want to find persons mm -hmm. who are, um, we call them unsung heroes, mm -hmm. but they're not the ones that seeking the hero ship medals. No. <laughs> I yeah. mean, but they yeah. just go about doing what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because if you take the importance of the church yes. in our community, really important, a lot of people don't realise that um, Len Dyke, yes. He was an ordained minister. Mm. And uh, if you take RAFA, you mentioned RAFA, yes. which stands for Renewal, Advancement, Financial Freedom, Autonomy. It's an international development agency. It's the only one that we have in our community. Yeah. That was uh, initiated by Church of God of Prophecy. Okay. So, so it's an agency that focuses on community development. And uh, in fact, at the time, um, it was the only agency where we got medical equipment and then gave it to all mm. diaspora organisations, regardless of their, their background. And, and Rafa yeah. is still going on strong. No, it? absolutely. Rafa, right. I, the, I passed the baton on to Angela Clark, mm. who's the national director of Rafa, and she's doing a very good job. Let's switch slightly. 
passing the baton. Yes. That's yeah, something yeah. which also which is fundamental. I'm going off Absolutely. script completely. Yeah. Passing the button. Usain Bolt on all these yeah. guys, it doesn't yeah. matter who is at the start, yeah. who is at the end, but yeah. it's a teamwork. Absolutely. And the same bit of leadership, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, the theme for Rafa, passing the baton, mm. we were actually awarded the Inspire Mark for London 2012. Yes. And our theme was passing the baton, inspiring peaceful, caring and enterprising yes. neighbourhoods. Yes. yes. And in fact, the Jamaica Relay team, mm -hmm. um, we, we always used to show that film because the point that I was constantly mm. making to people, that in order to win, you have to work mm. as a team. Yes, yes. And yes. Uh, you have to think about where best to use the talents in your team. And at the end of the day, regardless, you know, Usain knew that mm. those three runners before him would do, play their part. So he just had to get the baton over the line. Wow, wow. Well, do you think then that what is very important is that not just Afro Caribbean understand legacy, but all persons do and why? No, absolutely. It's really important. Mm. It's really important to, to actually also have the humility to understand yes. that all of us have inherited heritage from those who've gone before. Okay, well, there's a big thing going on in the UK now, and um, in a couple of months or so, there's going to be this massive EU referendum. Yeah. Some call it Brexit. After a while, everyone was saying Brexit, and I yeah. said, you know what, Brexit, it. Brexit means you're getting out. Yeah. Um, now, the game is all changed now. Right. Rudy Page, in or out? I'm going straight at it. Good question. I would <laughs> certainly like more information like everybody else. I'd like more facts. Yes. And I hear all the noise and the mm. vested interests but I certainly would like more facts. But one thing I do know, generally speaking, it's better to work as a team and in groups. But then, of course, you've got to feel happy that you're part of that group. Now, this brings me back into what I said before to bring mm. CARICOM. CARICOM. In or out. Jamaica. Everybody's sometimes having a good go. Jamaica is yeah. having a go at trend that yeah. trend. People yeah. are saying boycott Jamaican yeah. products. CARICOM. Yeah. A block. Europe, it's important. It's, it's important. It's important for particularly the UK Caribbean, mm. what we would call the English-speaking Caribbean, yes. to be united. It's fairly obvious because um, I think CARICOM only represents about fifteen to twenty percent of the whole of the Caribbean, anyway. Yeah. And if you think of the jobs, skills, and opportunity for Caribbeans. It, it would make sense to be, you mm. know, to, to work things out, out amongst themselves. But I have a feeling that, you know, at the top level, they do work together quite closely. So that means to say you think the EU, they should work together and stay in? I'm sure the EU will. I'm not saying they do. <laughs> I'm sure I'm, <laughs> it's all about interest, isn't it? <laughs> all right. OK, listen, um, one other thing before we sign off with any guests, we always like to ask, um, what is your mantra? What's your, your quote yeah. that drives you, inspire you? You know, what, what would you say? Well, I always you? keep in mind my five attributes of determination, mm. discipline, character, courage, faith. Five attributes. Yeah. Determination. Mm -hmm. Discipline, character, courage, or faith. Fantastic. Now, what's next for Rudy Page? Next, I'm working on a program called Trade and Services Program Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So I'm, again, very interested in ensuring that there's a, um, what I would call inclusive growth. Mm -hmm. So I want to see more of our management consultants, researchers, and uh, business people doing international trade, particularly in the Caribbean. Yes. And uh, Jamaica is my sort of, uh, I guess, the pillar. Yes. But I think it's important to spread it across the Caribbean. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's never enough time to um, get into speaking to someone um, to get all the information. But as you have seen and as you've heard, there's a legacy and there's lots of interesting and educational historical information that sometimes we don't have. And that is one of the reasons why I want to bring different guests to actually hear, and you can actually decipher this information and use it. But the most important thing is to bring it into context and capitalize on the history, capitalize on the legacy of persons like Rudy Page who have passed on and passing through, because guess what? 
He's still 25, even though he's been in the business for over 33 years. <laughs> All right, Rudy. Something like that. Or more, you know. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Rudy Page, you know, Good to be for here. joining us. Right. Good, good. Thank you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, for more information on Rudy Page, visit our website at silburn.com. And of course, you'll see Rudy Page website on the page as well. And please remember to visit, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. More details can be found at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for watching and see you next time on The Silburn Show. My name is Rudy Page. I've just been on The Silburn Show. Please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hello. I don't like when I say hello. Hi. Subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. I can't say subscribe.